G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to DCS World with Mags and welcome to DCS World in VR. So today we're doing the Alert 5 mission, it's the first mission of the little mini 1989 Hornet campaign that uh, comes with the Hornet. And I've played this on the channel before, I'm sure most of you who have the Hornet have played this one as well and you've probably seen it played elsewhere. I'm mainly flying this one out as it's a nice little easy mission for me to mess around with the VR settings. Now, the frame rate in this video is not going to be particularly great. Uh, I will get to why that's a problem at the moment, but I will assure you, inside of the HMD, this was actually running buttery smooth. I managed to get DCS after two days of messing with the settings, including having to go into NVIDIA control panel and start messing with stuff in there to finally get DCS running nice and smooth. Unfortunately, recording it is going to be a real pain in the ass. Uh, at the moment, on a Windows Mixed Reality headset, which is what the G2 is, you've only got a couple of options you can record with. The first option that I've been using for IL-2 and War Thunder in order to get smooth playback has been stream screen recording of the standard mirror that all games produce for the headset. Unfortunately, the tricks that I've been using in there in order to increase the size of the mirror in order to get a 1080p screen unfortunately don't seem to work and I'm, that is the only way of getting smooth playback at the moment. The Windows Mixed Reality playback, its portal is garbage, the quality is terrible, the playback speed is awful and it's just it's just crap. Windows needs to upgrade that significantly. It is by far the worst. Oculus users have a way around this with the Oculus Mirror but uh, they, unfortunately, I don't have access to that on a Windows Mixed Reality headset, only Oculus users do. So the only other way to record a normal aspect window of DCS is currently to use the OBS VR plugin, which uses the Steam VR mirror. The problem is that uh, Steam in March, April last year released a patch that nerfed that mirror for non-Steam affiliated, direct Steam affiliated headsets. So that is not, uh, in index users and Vive users are unaffected. Uh, everybody else, the window will play back at 50% of maximum speed so 50% of whatever you're getting in the headset so I'm getting about 60 FPS or a bit above inside of the HMD while playing DCS world at the moment it's nice and smooth which means I'm getting about 30 on the playback for the mirror but then there's a bug for Windows Mixed Reality users that halves that again most people can't get above about 15 frames per second inside of that mirror currently and has been a problem for over a year. Steam have acknowledged it and they haven't fixed it. This is the bug that I've been talking about that is really making doing these videos a pain in the ass. Well, unfortunately this one I haven't got a workaround for. So this is as smooth as I could get it and this is after, again, going into NVIDIA driver settings and changing how NVIDIA handles the Windows Mixed Reality portal as well as optimizing the balls out of this headset and all of its settings to get as smooth a playback as possible. It kind of sucks because inside the headset is absolutely beautiful and the small sliver that DCS actually puts up that shows what's going on inside the headset by default is perfectly smooth as well, but there's just not enough of it to make a video out of. I'm just gonna let these clear up for the moment. Currently my wingman calling out every single contact that he's running across, one after the other. There we go. Now as you might notice under the wing if you played this one before, I did make an adjustment in the mission planter. I'm not entirely sure what the hell have done to sparrows in the current patch on open but they are really bad. So I pulled two of the sparrows off the standard loadout and put a rack of two extra aim nines under each wing. So I'm on six sidewinders, two sparrows, and all of them are appropriate for this mission. Now, the recording is not going to affect anybody who's not trying to make content, of course. That's a problem that I'm going to have to deal with. For those of you looking to just get into DCS VR, the experience is wonderful. The well, once you've got the software running smoothly inside of the HMD, 
Yeah. The experience is wonderful. It's probably the single best way to play DCS. As I discovered years ago when I did my first ever VR video on the DK2, nothing has changed. It's still the best way to play DCS. But it takes a hell of a lot of work and a hell of a lot of messing with settings in order to get it smooth. I mean, it took more effort to get DCS smooth inside of the headset than it did to get Microsoft Flight Simulator smooth. And considering how much of a hardware hog Microsoft Flight Simulator is, that's saying something. Anyways, this is about to get noisy, so we're going to go through this initial engagement. I see you're on the other side. Right, splash one. Second MiG-29 cutting over our left there, but I'm going to roll off right while our wingman engages him. And I'm going for the 24Ms. They carry anti-ship missiles. They're the primary target. We need to stop them before they can get into a position to launch against the carrier group. Splash. Rolling back, switching to sidewinders. That's Fox 2 away on another 24M. And splash. Now I'm looking for the last one here. Now I've just heard my wingman go down a well uh, go down as well. Two again. And that's another splash. And that one was a. Uh, I think that one I did on reflex, and I may have been thinking there for a second that I was actually armed with x rays that may have had a chance of making that turn, although even an x ray would have struggled. And at this point, I've, I've had a moment here. I've just heard that the pilot and my wingman has been shot down. Now, my wingman was engaging the second MiG-29. That means the, MiG, uh, the second MiG-29 is likely still alive. But I've sort of forgotten about that, and I'm trying to be a little cocky, to be honest. I'm going for a gun kill. Stalling the Hornet over. I'm getting the shots reasonably close, and it was somewhere around here that I realised, hang on, that MiG-29 is still probably alive, so switch back over. Fox 2. And splash. So that's the last of the, uh, the 24Ms taken out. So the carrier group is now safe, but I don't know where the MiG-29 is. It's not popping up on RWR, it's not on radar, and I can't see it. Uh, that's three things you don't really want. And once again, no markers in this particular flight. I have managed to tune the graphics to the point now where I can actually see the targets. It's still not great spotting, although it does come across better in the video, although the video is ballooned out a little bit and a little bit enlarged, uh, just due to the way that the... Uh, the plug-in actually records the video. But this I can about deal with. I don't think I can adjust my settings anymore though, unfortunately. And there's just nothing. There's no MiG-29 around, I can't see it anywhere. So it was about here I was getting ready to roll out and go home. And in just a moment, I'm uh, going to have the realisation that uh, I have access to an AWACS, so I can just call them up and ask for a bogey dope, and if the 29 is still alive, it'll give me its location. 
Now there are targets popping up on the radar ahead. There are other aircraft operating in the area. Those are friendlies. It's likely an F-14 that's actually doing a, uh, a bit of a wide patrol as it's heading back towards the carriers to recover. But yes, this is without a doubt the best way to play DCS. It's just a shame that it's not optimized well enough to make it easy. You're going to want to do a bit of reading and a bit of research if you're setting up a, getting a, a virtual reality headset and wanting to play DCS on it. You're going to have to spend a lot of time messing with the settings to work out for your particular hardware exactly what settings will give you the smoothest frame rate inside of the headset and exactly what settings will actually allow you to be able to see the targets. Because as I said, just messing with the gamma um, of all things you can have the gamma at uh, 1.6 and you can't see the plane. Drop it to 1.5, suddenly the plane's visible. Drop it to 1.4 and suddenly the plane disappears again. I have no idea why this affects the plane's rendering, but it does. Just tweaking the gamma can actually cause the planes to cloak and decloak. Wizard 1, one call 4, one. Request bogey dope. There we go, there's the bogey dope call. Right, 20 nautical miles and the aircraft's at 7,000 it's behind me so the MiG-29 is still up now at this point I have one 9M left on the rail so I've got one missile left in total I've got about half my ammunition load on the cannons and I've got a little over 8,000 pounds of fuel which is currently fine that's not actually a problem plenty of fuel to get back to the carrier but um, if I'm going to run down this MiG-29, it doesn't want me to run it down, so I'm going to be lighting the candles and burning through the fuel fairly quickly. The, uh, the Hornet is a hungry girl when you've got the afterburners lit. Now, the entire screen seems to be leaned off to one side too, I should probably cover that one. The OBS plugin actually allows you to select whether you're recording from the left or right eye. My, I'm right eye dominant, so what you're seeing is the right eye. So, if the screen looks like it's shifted to the left, I'm looking down the HUD from the left eye, and I'm checking past the HUD looking for targets with the right. So that's why everything looks a bit skew -if. I'm, um, I'm essentially trying to iron sight past the HUD into the sky without any of the, the tint from the glass or any of the, uh, the HUD itself getting in the way of my vision. But yes, you are viewing this from either one side of the head or the other one way around. This is actually one of the things that VR allows you to do that uh, isn't taken into account. You can, just like in real life, look down something while also keeping a peripheral vision up at the same time in a way that just doesn't work on a flat screen. Actually kind of amazed the Hornet kept the lock the whole way through this. I was waiting for it to drop this, uh, drop this MiG-29 the whole way through. Now, on the recording side, I am going to try and improve this as much as I can, but I am kind of a little hamstrung at the moment. Uh, basically, I need Microsoft to fix Windows Mixed Reality, which they haven't done in years. I need Steam to fix the bugs and remove the restrictions on the Steam VR window, which they actually have a financial incentive to not do, since they have their own headset now. Or I need a third party to come up with a tool for recording, that does the same job as both, but without any of the restrictions, which I haven't been able to find one yet, but I'm hoping there might be some hope in there somewhere. But anyways, we are finally caught up to MiG-29, it's turned around, we're about to cross, one nautical mile out, bringing it down the left-hand side, and going vertical. That's an over-the-shoulder look that you can't do with track AR. I actually lost it in the cross there. So right now I'm in the blind, still checking for target. Now the spotting isn't perfect here, but I don't think this was actually a spotting issue. I think it was either directly below me or directly above me. Unfortunately, I do not have a track file that uh, can actually make it this far in at this point to be able to find out. But I think it was in one of the blind spots on the aircraft that I couldn't see past. 
Now I'm listening to the call outs from the AWACS here because it's giving me directions based to me. So 074, so it's back left. And it's going to jump to 240 on the next call. So 249, so we've actually crossed over. I think it was directly below the aircraft. I probably should have inverted and checked the sea at that point, and I might have been able to see it. And that's when I pick it back up. So the spot of the 29 just briefly over the shoulder, and it was coming up from below me. Now, at this point, it's actually got a kill shot, but it doesn't take it. I think it was actually out of missiles at this point, because it's already had an engagement with my wingman. Uh, there was a multiple missile shots fired there, so I think it's actually out, and it's going for the gun kill. So what I've done here is I've pulled the aircraft into the stall. It was really the only option that I had available for the, uh, the attitude I had the plane at. And caused the 29 to cross over. And now I'm just tipping onto its tail. And I'm just going to follow it through. A little bit of lead. I am dealing with a 9M and not an X-ray, so I do want to get my nose ahead of the aircraft a little bit. And Fox 2. And splash. And that's the MiG-29 taken out. So that is the last aircraft. So, so far, two MiG-29s and all of the 24Ms. So the entire flight group was eliminated by me. But I'm coming back with only half a load of cannon left on board, no missiles, and basically all of my fuel burnt out. I've got enough to make it back to the carrier, but I've got to be fairly economical about it, at least until I get right on the carrier where I have a little bit of fun, uh, and I'm not going to be landing with much left in the tanks. And there we go. Mission completion. I do really like the 1989 campaign, I think I'm going to play it all through again on the channel, but this time completely in VR. It's, it's a great uh, equaliser for the Hornet, as it takes away a lot of the Hornet's uh, more powerful toys. You don't get access to the AMRAMs, they've got no X-rays, you've got no HMD to actually aim the missiles. It's back to basics, and it's a lot of fun. It's also not a particularly long campaign at about five missions long, so I might actually play through this again and also continue tweaking my recording. But anyways, let me know in the comment section down below whether or not this is you know, watchable in its current state. I was almost not going to upload this, but I've had a lot of requests to show DCS in VR, and this is as smooth as I've managed to get a recording at this point. I really wish I could do better, but I'm just kind of hamstrung by the tools that are available. If anything else, this is one area where VR development really needs to be worked on. The tools that allow for VR content creation are abysmal at this point and really do need to be expanded on. Um, also options from the developer's standpoints. This would be a hell of a lot easier if, say, Eagle Dynamics in their VR section had options that would allow for control of the VR mirror that DCS naturally creates whenever you go into VR. It's, at the moment, it's too small to record from. But if I had the option to rescale it, change its resolution, or to move its position on the screen in, v in DCS's own menu system, I could increase it to the point where I could straight record from the mirror and bypass all of the external software that's currently needed in order to be able to record it, in much the same way that I'm doing this with War Thunder and IL-2, because that is essentially what I'm doing with War Thunder and IL-2. That's how I'm getting smooth recordings out of, the, out of that software at the moment. I'm not using any of the external software. I'm straight recording from the game with a little bit of trickery in order to get the resolutions right. Unfortunately, there's no option for that here. So, um this is the best I can do. But if I had a few options like that, I, I don't know if anybody over in Eagle Dynamics is even paying attention to my videos anymore, but if you are, a few options in there would make it a lot easier for all content creators covering DCS that want to do VR content, make their life a hell of a lot easier to do some really nice, uh, high-quality videos from the VR point of view. Anyway, let's jump to the landing. I did wind up with a couple of go-arounds here, one because of a bad approach and one because there was another aircraft coming into trap and I was uh, going to get in its way, so I got told to bugger off by the tower. But overall I was pretty happy with this landing. 
it is much easier to land everything in VR as well. You have a much better sense of depth and positioning on where to put the aircraft. But that is pretty much it for the flight. So that was a three wire. So now I'm just gonna bring this around and park the Hornet where it needs to be parked. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. The next one, I won't be going so much into talking about the, uh, the issues behind recording in VR or the rest. I just wanted to keep everybody updated. I'm going to probably do this as I cover a first time on each one. As I said, Microsoft Flight Simulator is another one that I'll be doing fairly soon, although it has another problem. Um, one that I'll have to cover there, because I still, while I've got it running smoother than DCS and it was easier to do, it has some recording issues as well that are going to take some, uh, some working around in order to be able to get a decent video up. But I am working on that. I know a few of you have been asking for it. Anyways, guys, until next time, remember to click that like button if you did, share and subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, take care.